We say what they can't radio. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Radio One World Fest. Brought to you by One World Fest Global. I am your co-host, Miss Lisa Ray. And to my right, I have our other co-host, Miss Nefertiria Jones. Hello, everyone. Welcome. So today we have a dynamic forum. Um, we're going to give you an opportunity to meet some wonderful people here, some chefs and some people, some entrepreneurs that are culturally diverse, and we're going to share their cuisine. So... Um, We've got quite a few people here today, so we're going to get right into it. I know you guys love to eat, and we all come from different places around the world. So culturally, we all relate to food, yes? Yeah. That's right. Yes. I know I do. I grew up on rice and beans and collard greens, so <laughs> I am, I'm here for the food today. So we're going to have a wonderful experience. I'm going to let my co-host, Nifateria, get it started. Well, first, we do definitely have, I know you see the gentleman to my right, and we have two ladies to my left. So we're going to get into, for our first taster, we have Chef Natasha. So I would like to know where you're from. I'm from, originally from Queens, but I reside in Long Island in Brentwood. Oh, Brentwood, Long Island, that's where you live right now. Yes. Um, and tell us about your food and your style of cooking. You know, what motivated you, what inspired you to actually be a chef of this caliber? Family. Um... From when I was young, everything around my family kind of did around food, right? So we can get a, things together in two seconds. Someone walks in the door, next thing you know, 10 people's in the door, and everybody's like, what we cooking, right? And what I notice is whether you're sad, you're happy, anything going on, food it has a way of bringing everybody together, right? So just what made me want to cook, I remember just being young. My heritage is Jamaican, and we have Spanish, and then I'm born here. So I put my little twist on it, and I just remember my grandmother cooking. Every morning she comes home from work, tired, but she's in that kitchen seasoning and singing. Then I remember my Aunt Debbie. She's the young, fabulous one, but she still came in. Fly, gucci out, still cooking, and, you know, doing her thing. And it just made me, when I had my family, want to cook. And I think I cooked in everyone's kitchen, because I just like to see everyone happy and together and just, you know, want to stay together. And that's what I think with food, it does. It feeds you, it nourishes you, and it just makes you happy. Okay, and I'm gonna make a round, and then we're gonna come right back to you okay. to talk about your cuisine, and as well as your style of cooking. Okay. So think about, you know, which your unique style that you add. <laughs> okay. well, well, like my daughter said, a pizzazz. <laughs> I, I wanted you to mention your cuisine, though, because you did mention where you're from, okay. and you mentioned a little bit about your roots. So let's mention your cuisine, and then um, we'll continue. I did the hubby stew beef, everything on my menu is named after my family. Mm -hmm. So I did the hubby stew beef, and then I did Mama Marika's garlic mashed potatoes. Okay, so is this a combination of like Jamaican? Jamaican and American. I wanted to okay. put both. So Jamaican. <laughs> yes. Jamaican. Okay. So we, got the, we got the hubby stew beef and the Mama Marika mash. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to go to the lady on, uh, next to you and introduce yourself. Okay, so I'm really not a chef. Well, I'm not a chef at all. So, can but you're I, complimentary. Yes, to I am complimentary, here. and I think that um, you know, with every good meal, you should have a glass of wine and music. Oh, also, yes. <laughs> brings the two together. So, I'm here in that aspect. Um, my name is Criterion, or my company is called Criterion, mm -hmm. and there's a new event um, that I'm embarking on with another uh, partner of mine um, called Beats, Vibes, and Wine. So I will tell you more about that later, but I want to hear more about the food. All right. Yeah, you know, one thing, and I just want to stay on you, food and um, wine go together. So yes. as we are tasting one um, chef cuisine, we will take a sip of wine to wash our palates, <laughs> and then we're going to switch over to the next one. Um, so that way, that's why we have our wine here, to make sure we could go between chefs. So we're going to come down to our gentleman right here and have, have him introduce us all. Uh, so my name is Coyd. Um, I'm Guyanese. Born and raised, came to the States when I was about nine. Mm -hmm. um, what brings me to cooking is just uh, natural food. Uh, I, as I said, I, I've, I was raised in Guyana, so in the backyard we have chickens, we have cows, we mm -hmm. have the trees, mango trees, salmon mm -hmm. trees, you can name it. Um, so just growing up and being surrounded by that um, on a day-to-day -day is what really draw me to food. And food is a common ground, it brings everyone together. And Absolutely. <clears throat> why not just play with that? Um, 
I just remember like early mornings is going on Saturday mornings going to the uh, going to the uh, market with my mother, seeing all the vegetables, having mm -hmm. her pick things up, cleaning in the kitchen. Um, mm -hmm. She's a single mother, so I was I'm, and I'm the eldest, so I was responsible for like helping her with the vegetables every right. from day to day, cooking, cutting your meats and plots and such. So. That's really draw me into food. I just love being creative and uh, creating with my hands. Uh, so that's basically it. I love um, that. I would say my niche is most or less Indian, of course. Mm -hmm. I love Asian food because, unfortunately, I, I can't have too much dairy. I'm like, that was a tolerant. So, <laughs> oh, yes. We don't um, need that. Not Dairy's not really good for you anyway, but, <laughs> yeah. so that's okay. Um, I love Asian food just because the flavors are really pronounced, they're mm -hmm. dominant, and I love spice. And it just blends well with, uh, with uh, Caribbean food as well. So. So you combine That's, Caribbean yeah. and Asian? In, in Asian, yeah. For I, the most part, um, I try to tie in some African food as well. Okay. Um, you won't see that here today, but that's that's kind of like my my three piece right okay, there. Okay, I think I need to see you afterwards. But <laughs> yeah. So tell us what you you're preparing today, or what you prepared today for us. Um, today I prepared a uh, oxtail wonton. Um, mm. It has a little Asian pears, um, some bok choy, some cabbage, and then some braised mm. oxtail. You raise for like three hours, and then just reduce that up. Uh, that sauce for about another three hours. <laughs> um, that's paired with a uh, tamarind sesame sauce as well. Um, then I made a dish uh, from Guyana. Uh, it's called metham ji. This reminds me of my childhood. Um, so it's basically provision, which is like root vegetables, right. mm -hmm. braised in uh, coconut milk um, with a pepper called wairari pepper, which is from Guyana itself as well. Um, <clears throat> and I paired that with some um, saltfish. It's classic paired with saltfish. Yes, yes, yes. Or, or some mackerel if you want. Um, so I paired that with some saltfish. I added some uh, bok choy, which is uh, it's an Asian vegetable. Right. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's just a burst, it bursts of flavor. It just mm -hmm. soaks up anything that you cook it in. Right. Um, and then some uh, just finish with some fresh thyme. So. Mm. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna go around again and like to know how do we um, get in contact with you? anyone who wants to know how to you know research you, identify you. Do you have websites? Do you cook somewhere that people can go and like? Sure. Um, well, I do have my Instagram and my Facebook, The Taste of Home. And also, once a month, or I try twice a month, I do a tasty table at my house. So it's a whole setup. Um, and it's just kind of like a surprise. I want to come. <laughs> <laughs> it's a surprise. When they come in, um, they're seated at the round, well, it's like a square table. And I surprise them with a the dish. They don't know what they're getting. I do reach out to them because I send them an invite, either through Instagram, and they'll get a logo saying, come on over, you're invited. Okay. So when they do come over, they're getting two um, poetries, two side dishes. They're going to be met with a signature drink, whatever that is, and then I do not bake, but I recreate. I'm a great recreator and give them a dessert. Yes, so they can get to me either my telephone, um, the Instagram, again, Facebook, Instagram again. The, taste the Taste of Home, and uh, Facebook, The Taste of Home, or they can email me at thetasteofhome at yahoo.com. And do you want to also say that one more time? The Taste of Home at yahoo.com. And do you want to also mention your phone number? Or you... Yes, it's 718-350-6540. Okay. And you said signature drinks, so let's go to Criterion. You've got some signature drinks over there, don't A good you? opening. Okay, so today what I bought was actually Prosecco. Mm -hmm. And um, Prosecco is a sparkling wine, just a little fact. Um, the difference between sparkling wine, because I always wonder this, so I'm sure other people may wonder it too. Right. What's the difference between sparkling wine and champagne? Right. Um, it's how it's prepared, but also Prosecco is found in Italy. That's what they call their sparkling wines. With champagne, you'll only find it significant to France. Okay. So um, I bought Prosecco. The brand is called Bottega. They actually have um, three different, well, they have multiple wines. But within this line, this is the rose. They have a platinum, which is somewhat like a sparkling Moscato. And then they have a gold, which is a brut. In Italy, the Italians love the brut. But I find that in North America here, it's the rose, so I bought what um, I like as a favorite, and hopefully you'll like it too. And have you ever um, made your own wine? I know Southern people, they make wine. Like I like have gin. gone to places and stomped the grapes and made wine like that, but on my own, I haven't ventured yeah, to do that. Yeah. But so we will take, like, basically you understand wine, how to drink it. Like, what's the difference between um, cheese wine and bread wine? I never knew. <laughs> so I actually have a wine connoisseur where we do Beast Vibes and Wine. Um, there's a wine connoisseur. And during the first hour and a half of the event, 
there's always a wine sponsor or a couple of wine sponsors and the connoisseur will walk you through um, what's the difference between each wine, what to pair it with and of course with that there's always um, someone there selling food and different vendors there as well so the two well I try to get the two to work together for the vendors to say well what will you be serving this night and then we try to get a, we reach out to a wine um, sponsor to say, well, can you give us red wines, et cetera? And there's someone there to answer all those questions. I know some about wine, but I leave that to the wine council. And how so does it reach, um, reach you? So I'm on Instagram, and it's Criterion, and that's spelled K as in King, R as in Robert, I as in Ida, T as in Tom, E as in Eddie. R is in Robert, I is in Ida, Y as in Yellow, O is in Oscar, and N is in Nancy um, on IG. Um, also, I have a Facebook page, but um, Instagram is much more active. And my phone number, if anyone's interested, you also can find about the event, Beats, Vibes, and Wine. You can go on that as well. That's an Instagram page, but my phone number is 516-256-9334. And how often do you do that event? So Beats, Vibes, and Wine occurs uh, every first and third Wednesday mm -hmm. of the month. Um, our next Beats, Vibes, and Wine will take place on December 5th, which is a Wednesday. And um, Is that by invite only? or No, it's a, it's a completely free event. Okay. Um, and what makes it really great is that outside of the wine and the um, different tastings and everything, you always, each time you come, you will be a grace with a new experience. And where's that location? The location is at Hall of Fame Studios, and the address is 89-37-164th Street. That's in Jamaica, New York, downtown Jamaica, what they call it now. Okay, yeah. right, right, because everything is up and coming, of yes. course. Mm -hmm. And, Coyd, can you please share with us where we can find you? Um, so, I'm on Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. um, my page is called Visual Cookup. Um, just a snippet. I'm a photographer as well, so I do mm -hmm. food photography. Mm -hmm. So, I kind of combine the two, hence the name Visual Cookup. Food um, porn, right? Yeah, cool. yeah essentially. Um, Cookup is also a dish from Guyana, and it's a dish that kind of intertwines a, a bunch of different meats, and you just all simmer that in coconut milk as well. Mm -hmm. So, it's kind of like a melting pot. Okay. So that that's the name. Uh, that's why I chose the name Visual Cookup. So it's Visual Cookup on Instagram. Um, you can also contact me um, via phone. Uh, my number is 718-772-4198. Um, <clears throat> my email as well is Visual Cookup mm -hmm. at Gmail or Coy Jordan at gmail.com as well. Okay. Um, do you have any like pop up shops? Or so I do, well, I, I currently cook in the city for a corporate catering company. Um, it's called Savory um, in Midtown Manhattan, and I also host dinners. Mm. Um, once every quarter, I try my best to do so, because my schedule is a little hectic. Um, the series is called The Cook Up, and I just recently had one the 10th of November. Mm -hmm. um, so it was some classic pairings. I made my own wine as well, a hibiscus wine, uh, to serve with this, a few, mm. a few different cocktails. So we had like a tamarind lemonade, uh, passion fruit um, mule, passion fruit ginger mule. Nice. Um, I served uh, something called paluri, which is just a, it's basically a fried dough. Uh, it consists of a uh, split pea um, and then a few uh, warm spices and uh, peppers. Um, and then a lot more things I won't. <laughs> <laughs> so um, would you guys mind sharing some of these dishes with us right now? Sure. Yes. All right. Oh, yeah. So Radio One World Fest is going to take a short pause for the cause. And when we come back, you're going to see all of this wonderful cuisine. Right? Let's do it. Let's, let's present it. Welcome back to Radio One World Fest, brought to you by One World Fest Global. And we have another chef at the table. We'd like to welcome Mr. Tenzin Naima. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Tell us a little bit about your cuisine, uh, what you brought today. Today I bring my uh, traditional uh, food, Tibetan, mm -hmm. dumpling. It's a lot of flavors, beef flavor and chicken flavor. Mm -hmm. so, Okay, that sounds good. And and the, you're from Tibet, is that? Yes. Tibet. Okay, so I'm looking forward to that. Traditional dumplings. Yep. Yes? Yes. All right, all right. Okay. So we're looking forward to tasting your dumplings, and we're going to come to that. So thank you for coming today, thank and you. we look forward to that. Thank so you. let's give it up for Mr. Tenzin Naima. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So our first cuisine that we will be tasting today is from the Taste of Home, Ms. Chef Natasha, 
And again, explain what you prepared for us, okay. and we're gonna dive right in. Okay, so today I decided to make the hubby stew beef, and it's the same tradition of uh, brown stew beef or uh, stew beef Jamaican, right? And I made the mama's Marika's mashed potato, red mashed potatoes, um, and it's mixed with a little bit of heavy cream, garlic, and parsley. You know, just enough garlic so you can taste it, but not nothing too much overpowering. And I think it goes really nice with the stew beef. It's boiled down with scotch bonnet peppers, you have your scallions, your pimento seeds, just like um, Kinsen, right? So, you know, we have our traditions in Jamaica. It's all about the spices. My father wanted to make sure that I said it's all about the spices. So when I cook, it's more so the taste of home. I want you to feel like you're back at your mother's table. So there's times that you can't get back to your mom or to that auntie that cooks that food that makes you feel well. That's how I cook. I want you to feel like you're sitting in front of your mother's table, that I'm taking care of you. I love to feed people and make people <laughs> feel good. So go ahead, taste it, right. and let me know. I'm starting with the mashed potato. Yeah, I don't know why we start with the mashed potato. Mm, because it was easy to get to. <laughs> so that's what I yeah. made today. And um, normally, for myself, I don't like to taste while I'm cooking because I cook in abundance, so it mm. kind of slows down your appetite. And this Thanksgiving and Christmas and everything, I do catering for it, for people. I make specialty turkeys. So I've been cooking all week, making turkeys. I make jerk turkey. I make curry turkey and everything. So mm. how's well, your it? Your beef tastes like oxtail. Mm. <laughs> Is that a good thing? A very good thing. <laughs> And the veggies are good too, and the mashed potatoes are delicious. And um, I gotta get to this. This is like provision, right? Yes. Provision, y'all. With everything, normally West Indian, you'll always find a nice potato. You'll find a yam and a mm -hmm. pumpkin and a dumpling. things like that. Yes, I love and a dumpling, right? I cut the meat. I'm using my spoon. I'm sorry, I can't do a lot of talking right now. So, <laughs> um, if you want to show us, you know, on on the side what you did. Okay, so. I mean, in the tray, it looks... Oh, I'm yeah, stuck well, here. Yep, thank you. There's a mic over there, so you can take a head start. Okay. All right, hon. So we already dug into the pan, so it may not look as pretty as it did coming in. That's all right. But um, Let's pick up some I made stuff. two beef. I took... Hold this little pan. Okay. All right, so we're, we're grubbing over here. Okay. Oh. Okay, so I made a stew beef which I just boiled down. I used a whole pot roast. I like to use whole mm -hmm. top, um, top round, or you could use the top sirloin, whichever cut is better for you. And I boiled it. This is a six hour boil mm. that I took. Mm -hmm. So you have your carrots. I love to put corn. I like to make everything plentiful. So when you finish, you want, you want to sleep. As you say, you want to go right to your bed. So that's what I did. And this is the stew beef. Then we didn't have room to place it on the tray. And then Mama Marika's mash. So we did the red mashed potatoes. All right, so we used the whole red Idaho potatoes. I'm not sure if you can see. Yes. Yes. Whole red mashed pot red potatoes and then a little bit of the brown. Take some off with the skin and you leave some because the nutrients is in the skin. I don't like to take the skin off. You want all the nutrients. And I mixed it with heavy cream and fresh garlic a little bit of parsley and some thyme, just enough salt. I don't like to put too much salt in individual food just in case if they have sodium and things like right. that. So I'm cooking just to make sure that you're getting everything that you need. A good flavor. Yes. And now tell me about this corn, because this corn is, mm, it's banging. So I like to put the corn inside the stew, so then that that's way everything gets thought. into the bone, yes. as I call it. You know, we in Jamaica, we like to eat the bone. Right, and right. we like to, you know, sit there after. It may not be very pretty, but then we want to still, you know, tend to the corn. So it boiled along with mm -hmm. the steaks. So I could pick up all the flavor it of did. it. It did. Okay. Uh -huh. And I thank God for some mashed potatoes. You know, it's right after Thanksgiving. No. I don't want no more stuffing. Right. And I didn't want to make no more mm, rice. turkey. <laughs> No, so I think it's just so, over turkey. Yeah, yeah. yeah we so, but so this was really good. Thank it was you. Really good. We're gonna go to our next chef. We're gonna go to Criterion. Let's talk about. Cause we need. I need to wash this down. Yeah. <laughs> Let me wash this down right now. Mm. Let me know what y'all think. Mm. Mm. I might need my try? own bottle. I don't know. I'm, I know we're sharing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is nice. Try it. Yeah. Try it. Really nice. 
and it has like a, a, a like a, a taste of alcohol in it. I mean, it tastes alcohol. It's it's subtle though. It's yeah. like a um. I mean, I don't want to say wine cooler because people may mistake it, but it's it's subtle. It's like a spritzer. Right. That's what it, it makes me think of. So I like it. And I don't drink, so I just started drinking. So it's it tastes flavorful, like how I would like. I need a little, a little sweet, but a, a nice little tart in there. I like it. Can I take some? <laughs> sure. Well, you know, I could have raised you have a bottle. Um, you know, I'm gonna give you all the information. I'm definitely gonna go to the um, event. Cause I drink a lot of wine. I don't really drink a lot of alcohol, so I think that is something to promote for people who, you know, not really into getting lit. You know, we get turned with the wine. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that on the December fifth, actually December nineteenth, that's mm -hmm. the next event. Okay. Bottega will actually be the sponsors for that event, and you'll be able to try all of their um, flavors that they have. So but this particular wine, you guys will have it on December, December 19th. 19th. And, yes. And, and we could get different. Because uh, one thing I would like to point out is that sparkling wine is not really known in, you know, out here in North America. Mm -hmm. So that would be a great way to bring it out. And also the reason for that is because, um, you know, this is the holiday season. So usually sparkling wines, you know, sparkling season, we pair the two together. So sparkling wine, sparkling season. So, um, and the bigger bottles, you have the same, they're actually a lot prettier. I should have bought some of the um, other bottles, but um, this is these are the Bottega Minis. Um, and for each one of their regular size bottles, they do come in mini bottle size, but they're cute for a they picnic yeah. or um, just something to take like for occasion, like now. Right. Yeah. And <clears throat> thank you so much for that and sharing, and it goes perfect with the meal that Natasha has prepared. And now we're gonna go over to Cody. Cody, let's get your food over here so we right. can um taste it and uh the camera's gonna follow you yeah yep right. yep <laughs> and then we're gonna get to tenzin naima mm -hmm. all right so i'm looking forward to that uh, your your dumplings right okay. mm -hmm. and 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 tell us again the kind of dumplings that you prepared one more time come yeah, close to the mic uh, dumplings prepared uh, some white flour mixed with water. Mm -hmm. Then we make all the dumplings all make the hands. Come closer to the mic. This dumpling is making us all the handmaids. Mm -hmm. Handmaids. Yes, yeah, handmaids. And the flour, uh, white flour, instead of put the water, they uh, how see they mix together. Mm -hmm. The flour then make it like around the. Uh, it's uh, how, how to say? I don't know this. Like uh, roll it into. Roll it into two, uh, one hand. You use this hand like this. Mm -hmm. To they use it. the round to shape they, it. Yeah, shape the, the round shapes. Mm -hmm. They're making this uh, uh, ground beef right. inside uh, red onions, mm -hmm. and uh, they put the uh, olive oil. Mm -hmm. They have the salt. They have uh, something special, uh, beef paste. Okay. Yeah, flavor like that. This is all they mix together. Mm -hmm. Then put it inside. They make it like. It's handmade the chef, you see the chef. I can't wait. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then uh steam like uh, fifty minutes. Okay. Fifty minutes that it's like then boiling, something like that. So that's pretty quick. Yeah, but very cook, very but, cook. So do, but do you pre prepare like the, the beef and the, the chicken. Other, the yeah. chicken. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Usually I have beef and chicken. My restaurant is such a beef, chicken, uh vegetable also. Mm -hmm. They have three kinds of dumplings. Right. Yeah, this, I today I'm bring here like uh, chicken and uh, beef. Now you said restaurant. You had a restaurant. You yes, a restaurant? I have a restaurant. And where's that at, please? In the Jackson High, seventy-five, sixteen Broadway. Okay. I have their restaurant. And are you on Instagram or any social media? Yeah, I have Instagram. I have Facebook. I have Yelp also. And what is what name is it under Chef Tinsen? What's the name? Yeah, name is uh, they have uh, Long Tar Asia Bistro. His name, uh, restaurant name is Long Time is uh, Wen House. Mm -hmm. It's Asia Bistro means it's kind of all the Asians, Malish, Chinese, and the Indians, okay. and the Tibetans, all the mix of uh, food up a bit. Okay, okay, awesome. So we're gonna get to your dumplings in a minute, but right now we're gonna go over to Chef Cody. Koi. Koi. I'm sorry, I yes, said good. <laughs> Okay, so we have here a oxtail wonton with some Asian pears, a little cabbage. And then uh, that oxtail is braised for a couple hours in some warm spices. Um, then it's paired with a tamarind sesame um, dressing, or you could say dipping sauce. Excuse me, sorry, ladies. That's okay. Anybody see that? Yep. I 
I love the dish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice okay. dish. All right. So next, this is the Metam G uh, classic. We uh, played it like this, but of course, uh, I'm, I'm trained uh, French training, so you know mm. we have to elevate it a little bit. Right. Um, so it's braised provisions. Um, so you have your cassava or yuca, mm -hmm. um, some sweet potatoes, or they also call it a uh, batata. Right. Um, you have some uh, bok choy in there, some steamed bok choy, a little uh, okra, um, and then some uh, salt fish, uh, uh, a saute of salt fish. Mm -hmm. And I added some roasted uh, tomatoes, which isn't classically in the dish itself, but I need to cut some of that heavy abrasiveness with some um, acid. So I think some sweet and some acid, so I think uh, tomatoes would, was the perfect pairing. This looks amazing. Uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna grab you guys some plates. Okay. And um, so I see the okra looks beautiful here. Yeah. The tomato, the bok choy. Yeah, this yes. is okra. You made it. So that's that's braised in the uh, the coconut uh, concoction the, as well. Yeah. Oh man, y'all have to see my face. Like, <laughs> and the, and then we have the oxtail so wonton. Oxtail yeah. wonton. Has so anybody just, ever had that oxtail no. wonton? I would like no. y'all to see this okra. I'm gonna put it on my plate after I put this okra. <laughs> it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've always been afraid to eat okra. It pork. has to be fried hard, hard, hard. So I'm like really, I'm, I'm excited to taste this. Okay. Um, you need some cup of forks. Oh, you got it. Okay. Yes, all right. Well, you know, it wasn't the food, so. <laughs> but I would like to thank you guys again, and I thank you for coming thank you. out. And since we, you know, getting things starting, still have to uh, wrap things up. What made you become a chef? Yeah, I like to always. I like the so many food the kinds. You know, it's like uh, I keep the, my traditional foods. I save the prepare. I like so many foods. I like, but this. I like to make my food on the walls and show you that. I prepare my traditional foods. That's when I make a food, I make chef. <laughs> so you say that he became a chef because he wanted, he wanted to show people his traditional food right. and wanted to share it with people. So that made him become, become a chef. And that's normal that that brings everybody together. Yes. You know, the love of food and wanting to share it with everyone. You know, here at the One World Fest, we, we um, celebrate diversity and tolerance and inclusion and unity. And, you know, just the way we all just looking at the food, we, you know, brought us together with the eyeballs. So we have um, some people trying already. So, <laughs> um, so this is the uh, uh, salt fish. Yes, it's right. called, so the entire dish is called uh, Matem G. Matem G? Yes, Matem okay. G. Matem G is a dish. Yes. Um, mm. That's the salt fish right there. Mmm. The well, salt fish is perfect. It's perfect. It's not, um, I mean, you know, salt, salt fish should be, it's called salt fish for a reason because it's salty, but if it's overly salty, you yes. really can't you taste the flavor. Yeah. And we can taste the flavor in this. It's, it's wonderful. Thank you. The oxtail wontons is fabulous. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we have fabulous. Mm -hmm. So that's from Chef Natasha said, Chef Coit's. Chef Natasha. Yes, yeah, so to get a uh, approval of a right. uh, well-cooked oxtail from a Jamaican is <laughs> yeah. all I need. So and I mean, I'm just going to pop this whole thing in my mouth, I'm just saying. So <laughs> I'm going for it. Mm. I'm going to dip mine, you know, one dip, no two dip, no two dip. <laughs> So uh, this is how the wonton is delicious. The oxtail wonton mm -hmm. before it goes. Mm, right? Mmm. <laughs> I'm gonna be here for a second. <laughs> That's really good. Mm -hmm. Oxtail wonton, y'all. Mmm. Matem? Matem G. Matem G. Okay. <laughs> I was close. close. Matem G. <laughs> we'll call it that. But um, thank you so much for sharing Wait, your dish. Wait, I'm not gonna talk about this. Um, Okay. Well, we have. I can't talk with my mouth for another wee of seconds. Um, Maybe watching you now. So this is the okra. And mom, I'm sorry, but if this okra tastes better than yours, you know. 
I gotta try some of that okra. Mm -hmm. And I know there's some people on the side patiently waiting to try <laughs> as well. But um, we're gonna, we need to move on. We thank you so much everyone who's presented so far. We're gonna continue to eat, if that's okay with you. And Chef Tenzin, mm -hmm. if you don't mind mm -hmm. getting your dumplings, okay. we we'll be ready for those. Thank you. All right, so we're just gonna keep tasting the okra, the salt fish. To I'm make, not to get you don't like want none? You don't, you don't try it? Yeah. Don't, don't play. They have the mic, the mic in front of me. Listen, don't play with it. Can you, you give me a little try. scoop there? Yeah, this looks delicious. Yes, thank you. You want a piece of um, carrot? Yes. So, um, Chef Coy, um, what came, made you, came up with this? You know, I know you said it's a mix of tra tradition, you know, yeah. but I've never seen all this together. Um, this is just a meal I had all childhood. Um, my mom would make, uh, make this uh, every either Friday or Saturday morning, something, you know, that's extremely filling and gets straight mm -hmm. to the point. It's just root, root, root vegetables. Um, with the oxtail wonton, you know, oxtail is classically stewed or braised, and uh, I just wanted to do something new, something with a fun twist, and it's also familiar with others, and kind of cross cuisines as well. Um, so that was just basically the inspiration behind the wontons themselves and then, you know, we are used to oxtail being like extremely dominant and maybe right. a little salt forward so I cut, uh, cut some of that with the, uh, with the braised cabbage which I uh, escovish. Uh, so yes. you added some allspice, all a little, um, little vinegar right. and then you add the Asian pear for sweetness. Now Asian pear is, uh, it's, it's not the, uh, oblong shape that you usually see. It's kind of round, it kind of resembles right. an apple, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's less um, dense and it's less mealy, more crisp and a lot more sweeter. <laughs> so I just introduced that as well. So why, why is food important in, 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 in our culture? Why do you think it's important? Uh, I think it's important because it brings everyone together um, <clears throat> and it's an unspoken language. You don't need to speak all the smells and everything it's just we're talking to each other through that so i think food is important just to bring everyone together for the most part so that's and, and to learn from each other as well just because the cultures are very similar uh we just use slightly different spices, spices. and maybe the, the technique is slightly different right. but the food is essentially the same thing absolutely and so what about thanksgiving How, what was your thanksgiving what kind of food did you prepare for thanksgiving or what is thanksgiving like in your culture um well, in my culture, we don't necessarily have Thanksgiving, um, <laughs> but since I moved to the States, I'm basically Americanized, um, so Thanksgiving was a few days ago. Actually, my birthday was a few days ago, so I'm still recovering from that as well, but um, uh, Thanksgiving, we have a little mix of the American food, so you still have your mashed potatoes, you know, your yams, um, the turkey, and then we have curries and rotis as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we just bring everything together, so it's a melting pot. Um, let's bring everyone together and just basically talk, reminisce, and just catch up with your family that you haven't seen in like mm -hmm. months. Um, that's basically it. So, so speaking of melting pot, we have over here, we're doing something with that bottle. got those dumplings looking good. Yeah, let's get over there. Get some footage of that. And um, our, our CEO and founder, Mr. Kamel Ellis, off to the side, Seems like he has a, a question that he wants to ask, so we'd like you to yeah. ask that question. Oh, okay. Hi. Uh, no, my question was just going to be with Thanksgiving having just passed, and I know that some places around the world do celebrate Thanksgiving, and other places don't, so I wanted to find out what is the holiday in your culture where traditionally people come together and eat and celebrate. Is there anything similar to like the Thanksgiving holiday in, in your culture where folks get um, together and eat or is it just... You know, I would say uh, mostly it's the holidays in general. Uh, we come together. Uh, Christmas, of course, is a hard, uh, a big one. Um, where I'm from, we make. Uh, I'm sure Jamaicans make the same thing. We do our uh, sorrel. Yes. Um, spiked for the holidays, of yes. course, with some rum and then your spices as well. And this everyone just brings a dish, so it's basically a pot potluck. And you know, we share, we exchange gifts, and again, we laugh, we joke, we cry, and we just reminisce and talk about the old times and and talk about, you know, things that's happened since we last saw each other. So I would say the holidays in general and Christmas is the biggest one. <clears throat> what, do any of you have a favorite dish that you prepare or? Um, for me, I think 
I don't have a favorite dish. Whatever my family and my friends like, mm -hmm. that's what I love to prepare because I want to see them happy. Like, my cousin is here. Hers is my macaroni salad. So I named that after her. So when they're coming, and we get together all the time. We have mm -hmm. a very large family, so we get together for everything. It's where my kids think everything is a party. Right. And everything's <laughs> a celebration where we, this is just us. So um, my favorite dish is when you walk in the door and I know that you're there, I know what you like. Okay. So I'm going to tend to you. It's all about the tending to you. I want you to feel like you're at home. So that's my thing. So okay. I don't particularly have a favorite dish. Okay. Okay. We're going to go over. We see okay. Chef Tenzin is ready. Yeah. So we're going to go over to him. Okay. And you may, uh, the round was beef and uh, there was Chef one's uh, chicken. Okay. I have like... Uh, Two kinds of spicy sauce. Uh, one is a little bit spicy, one is less spicy. Okay. And mm, some I put the little salads, uh, whatever you guys like. The pie. Okay, I like have We got two different spices. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, like I, I don't. Oh, I forget the plate, my plate. That's okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, we're good. We're good. So these are um, Chef Tinzan Naima's dumplings. Yep. And um, so you have the, the beef. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, beef, the uh, round one's beef, okay. and otherwise chicken. So we have two different um, yeah. shapes. Different shapes, different uh, meats. Mm -hmm. The round one is beef, and the, the traditional. moon shape, sort of. Yeah, moon shape. Yeah, look at moon shape. And so the spices, one is. Uh, yeah, this this one's a little spicy, other one's a little less spicy. Okay. Um, do you suggest? It's very homey. I mean, it tastes like real. No, I'm not saying real. It tastes, you know, it tastes like gizzards. Yeah. It tastes like mom. Yeah, there's a lot. Homemades, you know? Really homemade. Yeah, homemade. Yeah. All the homemades. Now, I, 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 I ate the chicken. I didn't try the um, beef, so I want to try it with um, some of the sauce. Uh -huh. Great flavor. Um, great. I tried the beef. The, listen, even without the sauce, the flavor of the dumpling is amazing. It's popping in my mouth. Yeah, mm -hmm. so normally, when you have dumpling, the first you know, go to we put um, soy sauce on it. Mm. You know, yeah, it's right. Like lump of some, yeah. Never wanted, you know, I never really like dumpling mm. without soy sauce. <laughs> yeah. so, and you don't need it. Yeah, I don't need it. So you don't. Right. As soon as you bite into it, the juice just. The flavor. Yeah, inside the lime. You taste nice a lot juice. of the onions yeah, and the onions. scallion. In there. Now, is this something that you created on your own? Like this particular yeah. dumpling? Yeah, this is my own. Your own flavor? Yeah, home flavor. This mm -hmm. I make it, all the hand mix. Not gonna make a mission. You know, all the flavors, mm -hmm. like mix, hands, and the cutting meats, all the hands. What's a traditional dumpling before Tibet? Yeah, Tibetan they call the momok. His oh. name is Momo. Okay. The dumplings are think the English and the Chinese different names, so different mm -hmm. flavors, you know. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah, this Tibetan is Traditional food. Mm. Really good. And this is would you consider this like the street food in Tibet? Yeah. It, like you know, like the vendor food and things when you go out. Oh the yeah, they always winter is Tibetans are four seasons, you know. Oh. Summer, spring, fall and the winters. Most people they four seasons they eat a dumpling. It's most people most winter eating they make the uh, noodles. Mm -hmm. They hard uh, different noodles, Tibetan hand noodles. There's something like they call the ten tuk, something like this. so beef boiling, is soup, and then put the flour. And then with this particular mm. style, with the chicken, because I know you told us about how you did the roll. And if you guys can really pay attention to the round one, I mean it's very. Um, like yeah, all the time. <laughs> so you know, I know it's a technique with how you roll <laughs> the dumplings, but what did you do to actually make it the meat so mm -hmm. flavorful? Meat flavor inside, I put uh, red onions, and uh, then it's especially uh, they have uh, something a little bit, how do you call their They are powdered like a uh, beef paste. It's like beef flavor. Paste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, paste. Uh -huh. They put in salt and their uh, olive oil. 
Libra put they mix together. Nice. So once again, this is Radio One World Fest bringing to you international cuisine. And we have an array of flavors and spices going on in here. We have Jamaican and American. Yes? Yes. We have Guyanese and Asian fusion. We have Tibet. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, dumplings with phenomenal beef slamming. <laughs> I know we don't use those words when you're describing this. What I mean to say, <laughs> slamming, which is good. And then we also have the Prosecco brought to you by Criterion. So we want to give you a round of applause because this food yes. is phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank every chef for coming on and blessing us with your food. Like my stomach is really happy. You know, we have other people in the studio and. You know, we have we have a smile on our face, so it was like, mmm, mmm, you know, so and then all you heard in the headphone was smack. So you know it was really good. The food is awesome. I wanna thank you guys. <coughs> Before we go, sorry for the coffin. I want you guys to um, list your Instagram page okay. and your number where we can find you a web page, your restaurants, just one last time before we go, so we know that people are going to find you. Thank you. So um my my uh, Instagram page is Visual Cookup, <clears throat> all one word, of course. Uh, my number is 718 772 4198. Email visualcookup at gmail.com or coid jordan at gmail.com as well. And Miss Natasha? And um, The Taste of Home. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at The Taste of Home. And you can reach me at 718. 718- Three five zero six five four zero, and my email is the taste of home at yahoo.com. Criterion, please. So I can be found on Instagram and Facebook at Criterion. I already did the phonetic spelling, so I won't do it again. I'll just say Criterion, common spelling. But I like to invite everybody to experience Criterion at Beats, Vibes, and Wine this, well, in two weeks, December 5th, at Hall of Fame Studios, 8937 164 Street. Um, my email address is criterion at gmail, and my phone number is area code 516-256-9334. And last but not least, Chef Tinzan Naima, mm-hmm. with the fabulous dumplings going mm-hmm. on. Thank you. Uh, my restaurant address is 7560 Broadway in Jackson Heights. Uh, my restaurant name is uh, Longta Asia Bistro. It's, uh, my Instagram Instagram is uh, it's like they call the Longta, Longta, mm-hmm. L U. Mm-hmm. Oh, some one second. Okay. It's coming. Yeah. When you get it, let us know. So we, yeah, yeah, one second. We want to make sure we get that information in. Yeah, because the, so, the, the wine times are really good. Let's go over the food one more time. So we have. So we have an oxtail wonton that's paired with a tamarind sesame um, sauce. Um, Then we have a classic uh, dish from Guyana called Mm metemji, which is just our braised provisions, um, some root vegetables, a little okra, um, some roasted tomatoes, and uh, paired with salt fish as well. Um, And then I made the hubby stew beef along with Mama Marika's mash and um, with the provisions, the corn. Which was banging, and then um, we have the prosecco, which I like a little bit more. Please, thank you. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, thank you. So this is just prosecco. We again, if you get ten beats, fives, and wine, you can try a n- numerous <laughs> amounts of wine. There's a free wine tasting from six to seven thirty, along with the other vendors who are there as well. But this prosecco brand is Bottega, and this is the rose gold. Mm, delicious. And Chef Tinsen, Okay, uh, 7560 Broadway, Amherst, New York. Okay. Uh, my uh, telephone number is 917-745-177. And uh, Longta Asia Bistro, L-U-N-G-T-A. L-U-N-G-T-A, 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 L-U-
So we're gonna give everybody an opportunity to have some. Because if you leave it here, we're going to eat it all. And then I also want to say thank you so much. I have my daughter here. She wants to be a chef. So you know, this is the only time she went. She was willing to come to the radio show with me. You know, so um, I want to thank you for being an inspiration to our younger our youth. Yes. Letting them see that there is a possibility to do something with food and more wine. You know, because they go hand in hand. So thank you for coming out. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. So once again, thank you for being on Radio One World Fest. We're here every last Sunday of the month. We'd like to um, give a shout out to one of our VPs, Mr. Ruel Burford. It was his birthday a couple of days ago. So happy birthday to you, Ruel. Um, you know, a lot of us are going through some things. So we want to just remember everybody's loved ones during this time. Keep them in prayer. We want to give a shout out to our CEO and founder, Mr. Kamel Ellis, for being such a great leader. So thank you. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you so much. He actually set all this up today. So um, we appreciate you. Um, thank you to my co-host, the beautiful Miss Nefertaria. Appreciate you. And um, I am the co-host for Radio World Fest, Miss Lisa Angel Ray. I'm on Instagram, the real Lisa Ray, the real underscore Lisa Ray. <laughs> And um, yeah, check out One World Fest Global, okay? Thank One World Fest Global, we've got a lot going on. And let's continue with this fabulous food, okay? Let's continue eating this food, this international cuisine. Everybody can dig in now. Don't be shy. Come on. Right <laughs> don't, don't be shy. And check us out every last Sunday of the month. We have music coming up next month. And um, we're here to really um, bring an awareness to millennials and what their needs are. And we're here to support them. As much as we want to learn and we want to support them. So thank you so much for coming once again. And check us out next time on Radio One World Fest on We Say What They Can't Radio. Thank you. God bless. Have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you. <laughs>